All right, hackers and cyber curious folks, buckle up. We are going to crack open the secrets of KaliCyber.com. But remember, power ain't nothing without ethics. Today, we'll be digging into the digital DNA for, of my website, KaliCyber.com. But remember, with great exploration comes great ethical obligations. Let's play detective with the KaliCyber.com's domain. But keep in mind, exploration is awesome, but let's do it in the responsible way. All right, let's put theory into practice. We'll fire up Kali and use it in his enemy to explore a real domain. I'm going to use my own domain, KaliCyber.com. And you are welcome to learn from this site. First, you go to start menu on the Kali Linux. Let's call number one, information gathering. Under information gathering, you can see DNS analysis. And we're going to use the DNS enum. This will be our first video for information gathering. We're going to use the DNS enum tool. First, the first DNS enum is used to gather information about specific domain. We type DNS enum. And I'm going to type my site, kalicyber.com. And you will get a bunch of information. Let's go one by one. You can see DNS enum version 1.2.6. This indicates the version of the DNS enum tool you are using. And after that, we can see kalicyber.com. This is the domain that you are querying information about. Next, we can see host addresses. This section is going to list the IP addresses associated with the domain main information. This part, host address, tells you that the domain kalicyber.com results to the IP address 68, 65, 120, and 190. And this information will be considered valid for another 1 to 0, 0 seconds before it should be refreshed. And after that, we can see IN. This stands for Internet, which is the class of the data. And next, we can see A. This denotes an A record, which maps a domain name to an IP version 4 address. And you can see the IP version 4 address in here associated with the domain kalicyber.com okay let's jump into the name servers um, so uh, these are like a phone book for the internet they help computers find the actual addresses like IP addresses of the website just like a phone book helps you to find someone's phone number and um, you can see there's a two name server listed DNS1 DNS2 name chip hosting Com. These belong to Namecheap, a popular domain registrar and hosting provider. If you Google it, Namecheap, you will find that uh, domain registrar hosting provider in the internet. And we can see the IP addresses. So each name server has its own IP addresses listed on the string numbers like 156, 154, 132, 200. So think of these are the actual street address of the name servers on the internet okay let's jump to the mail mx servers and this section meet the mail masters mx3 hosting jellyfish system this is the star of the show with a low key priority 45 gets the first dips on all incoming emails think uh, of it's of the vip entrance for mail mx2 hosting jellyfish systems rank at 1407 this backup warrior steps in if mx3 is busy or unavailable next mx1 hosting jellyfish system um, bring up the rear with a priority of 1100 this last line of defense ensure no emails gets left behind that say that MX1 unable or MX2 unable or both unable. I mean, it should be both unable. Then the MX1 take the lead. 
and you can see on the right all the IP addresses for this uh, mail servers. Um, so having multiple MX servers with the different priorities helps ensure email delivery even if one service is unavailable. And we can see this jellyfish systems. So it appears to be an email filtering service. So these servers might handle spam filtering before delivering emails to the domain's inbox. Now you get a good idea about the uh, mail servers on this domain, our target domain. So they're using a spam filtering service. We can uh, think that's Jellyfish Systems and they have a high priority MX3 and all these priority levels and the IP address. Okay, let's jump into the train zone or transfer getting blind versions. And so this section shows unsuccessful attempts uh, to perform a zone transfers for KaliCyber.com against two servers hosted by Namecheap. You can see and DNS1 Namecheap hosting and DNS2 Namecheap hosting.com. Let's break it down. And next, we can see the two error messages, zone uh, na DNS name gposting.com and DNS gposting.com. So you can, it says trying zone transfers for kalicyber.com on DNS1 name gposting.com. So this specify the target domain kalicyber.com and the first name cheap, uh, name cheap server, DNS1 attempt for the transfer right now next one is a x f r record query fail refused this is a crucial line tells the the zone transfer attempt failed a x f r is the specific record type used for zone transfers and refused indicates the server denied the request so if i say simpler terms is that someone trying to download the entire domain information uh, for kalicyber.com from the two name cheap servers, right? So both servers rejected the request, preventing the uh, complete DNS zone file from the uh, being transferred. So they rejected. There's a possible reason for refusal. So if I say from security, standpoint zone transfers are powerful tool can can be misused to gather sensitive information servers often disable them for secure reason and the second the reason is configuration the name cheap servers might be configured to only allow zone transfers for unauthorized uh, users for specific domains and the third one is technical issues so sometimes temporary server problems or other technical glitches could also lead for uh, refusal. So you can try again second time and see if you can get something, right? Uh, there's an important to note that attempting unauthorized zone transfers can be considered unethical or illegal depending on the context. So understanding the reason behind the server response is crucial for interrupting the DNS information responsibly. Okay, next, you can see brute forcing with user share DNS NM DNS TXT. You get bunch of information here. So brute forcing is like trying to guess all the possible names in that book. You wouldn't know the extract names, so you use a big list of common names and try to each one to see if there's a match in the book. So, uh, so we found several parts of the website, like we found FTP, kalicyber.com, so used for the file transfer. This is a file transfer protocol. And next we found mail, kalicyber.com, used for mail. And we found webmail, kalicyber.com, for webmail. 
So all shares the same IP address, meaning they are likely hosted on the same server. So now we know everything hosted on the same server. That's all very valuable information. Okay, next we can see uh, Kali Cyber Class C Net Rangers 68 slash 24. So now imagine the intent like a giant apartment building with ton of rooms. Each room has a unique address, just like website have a IP address, right? The address 68 65120.0 slash 25 kind of tell us about a whole floor in this building. It's a, like a saying, hey, I'm talking about all the rooms between 68, uh, 65, 120, uh, dot 1 to 68, 65, 120, 20, 255. So from, from here, 1 to 255. So why this 24 matters? It's like a secret code that tells us how many rooms are in, on this floor. Think of it as a combination lock. If the code is 24, it means there are 24 rooms. 2 to the power of 24 to be extra. So, what does this have to do with the KaliCyber.com? Well, it turns out that some of the rooms on this floor with the address starting 68.65.120 okay, belong to carlycyber.com. It's like they have their own little apartment with this bigger floor. So uh, that's how we can get some information with the C net ranges. Remember this is just a simplified explanation. Real networks are much more complex with different class and, and rules. Got it? Okay, next we can see uh, performing reverse lookup on 256 IP addresses. So, so reverse lookup means that this is a process used to find the domain name associated with, within an IP address. Normally, when you want to visit website, you type uh, it's a domain name like like google.com and your computer uses a service called dns domain name service uh, no domain name system to find the ip address on the server where that website is hosted a reverse a reverse lookup does the opposite given an ip address it tries to find out what domain names if any is associated with the ip now you can see the 256 IP addresses block range is a, that was checked in the context of IP addresses. Uh, 256 usually means a full class C uh, range as explained earlier which includes all the possible last number variation from 0 to 255. So we can see zero results of 256 IP addresses. This means that when they try to find domain names for the 256 IP addresses, none of the IP addresses had a domain name associated with them that could be found. This is could happen for a few reasons, right? So one is the IP address might not be currently in use for hosting websites or services that are accessible from the internet. The second reason the IP addresses could be used for internal private networks where domain names are not registered in the global DNS. The third reason, there could be a technical issue or restriction that prevented the reverse lookup from working correctly. So that's what is performing reverse lookup on 256 IP addresses. You always can do uh, like second time run the script and see if you get some information and you can do your own research.